let us first understand tensors without any mathematical symbols and equations. The best route to understanding tensors is to begin by making sure that you are solid on your understanding of vectors. If you have taken any college level physics or engineering, you probably think of a vector as something like this. An arrow representing a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Where the length of the arrow is proportional to the magnitude of the quantity and the orientation of the arrow tells you the direction of the quantity. So in general, vector is something which has a magnitude as well as a direction. As an example, the black arrow is a vector representing the distance, magnitude and direction arrowhead in terms of longitudes and latitudes. But vectors can represent other things as well, such as an area. The length of the vector proportional to the amount of area, the number of square meters in the area. And then you make the direction of the arrow perpendicular to the surface, as you see on the figure. So in this way, this can represent an area as well. So vectors can represent lots of things. But if you want to take the step beyond thinking of vectors representing quantities with magnitudes and directions, to understand that vectors are member of a wider class of object called tensors, then you have to make sure you understand vector components and basis vectors. If you are even going to think about components of a vector, you better get yourself one of these coordinate systems. This represents a coordinate system. In this case, I picked the simplest one with the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, all meeting at right angles. This represents the Cartesian coordinate system, and the thing to remember about coordinate system is they come along with coordinate basis vectors. You probably run into these as unit vectors, and the thing to remember about these little guys as they have a length of 1, one of whatever the units are, that you are going to express the length of your vector in. So it could be distance, it could be velocity, it could be speed. The direction of the basis vector or unit vectors is in the direction of the coordinate axis. So this might represent the unit vector in the x direction. That's often called x. Little hat over it, as you see here. Or sometimes i hat. That's the x hat unit vector. It points in the direction of increasing x coordinate. Likewise, y hat, sometimes called the j hat, unit vector points in the direction of increasing y axis, which is this direction. And the z hat or k hat unit vector points in the direction of increasing z. Once you have the coordinate system and the unit vectors in place, now you are in a position to find the components of your vectors. How exactly you you going to do that? I think it's easiest to understand how to find the vector components if you begin with a vector in the xy plane. So I'm going to lay this vector in the xy plane at some angle to the x axis. Here you go. In order to find the y component, I'm going to project this vector onto the y axis. Similarly, in order to find the x component, I'm going to project this vector into the x-axis. And how am I going to do that? Here's one way. I want to use this torch here, as you see on the screen, to project the vector onto the x and y-axis. Firstly, I'm going to shine the light perpendicular to the y-axis that is parallel to the x-axis. And look for the shadow of the vector on y-axis, which is this one, black line here. That will be the y component of this vector as you can see, the shadow of the vector on the y-axis ends right here. This is the y-component of the vector. If I make the vector have a greater angle to the x-axis, so if I'm increasing this angle, notice the shadow moves this way. So, so the vector will start to move in this direction. The y-component is getting, is getting bigger because this vector is moving in this direction and this shadow will start to increase. And if I make the vector lie entirely along the y-axis, this means the angle between this vector and x axis is 90 degrees, or right angle, then the shadow and the vector are the same length. And the y-component is the length of the vector in that case. So your vector length is equal to the length of the 
y component of the vector now i have got my light shining perpendicular to the x axis and parallel that is parallel to y axis and the shadow cast by the vector onto the x axis gives me the x component of the vector notice that if i increase the angle to the x axis and decrease the angle to the y axis so i'm moving the vector in this direction your x component will start to get smaller another way of visualizing the vector component is to ask yourself to get from the base of the vector to the tip of the vector how far do i have to go in the x direction and how far do i have to go in the y direction in other words how many x hats unit vectors or how many y hat vectors or j hat vectors unit vectors would be would it need to get from the base to the tip of the vector so i can show you this if i get rid of these axes and just line up some of the x hat base vectors and some y hat basis vectors so in other words this vector is made up of five x hat vectors one two three four five x hat vectors plus four one two three four y hat vectors that means that instead of drawing an arrow for this vector you can simply say five of these vectors plus four of these vectors. and if you want to be complete since there is no z component of this vector zero of the z head vector and that is the same as this so in other words this is perfectly valid representation of that vector and of course if you know the basis vectors you would you wouldn't even have to put these on you could simply use these components as your vector you could write it in a little array like this you could even stack them up and put a nice parenthesis around it in this way this looks just like the way you see column vectors written so these are the column vectors which has three components x hat vectors y hat vectors and z hat z hat vectors x hat vectors y hat vectors and z hat of course these three components pertain only to the vector we had on previous slide a minute ago to generalize this vector to capital a for example we can replace these components with a subscript x a subscript y and a subscript z of course a sub x is the component pertain pertaining to the x hat vector basis vector a sub y pertains to the y hat basis vector and a sub z pertains to the z hat basis vector notice that we need one index for each of these because there is only one direction indicator per component so this is what makes vector tensor of rank one so it has only one index you will see in a minute why it's so powerful to represent tensors as this combination of components and basis vectors but first i want to show you some examples of higher rank tensor this is a representation of a rank two tensor notice that instead of having three components and three basis vectors we now have nine components and nine sets of two basis vectors notice all that components no longer have a single index they have two indices axx ay xy axz and so on also notice that the components no longer have a single index they have two indices why might you need such a representation consider it for example the forces inside a solid object inside that object you can imagine surfaces whose area vectors point in the x in the y and in the z directions on each of these surf types of surfaces there might be a force that has a component in the x or in y or in the z direction as shown here so to fully characterize all the possible forces on all the possible surfaces you need nine components each with two indices referring to the base vectors so for example a sub y y which is this one might refer to the y directed force on a surface whose area vector is in the y direction so if this is the y direction force and this is the area vector in y direction or normal to y direction then a y y would represent that similarly a sub y x might refer to the x directed force on a surface whose direct 
area vector is in the y direction and so forth this combination of nine components and nine sets of two basis vectors make this a rank 2 tensor